Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog, and we are here for the post credit scene discussion. So I just ask that all of you out there, if you want to talk post credit scene, just do it in this video. If you haven't seen the movie yet, obviously go away. Like, don't watch this until after you see the movie, and make sure you stay till the credit scene, which is in the midway uh, part of the credits. I stayed all the way till the end uh, twice when I saw this movie. I saw it both times, and I both times I wrote down that there was no uh, end, you know, end credit scene. It was in the middle of the credits. So if you haven't seen that scene yet, I would say turn away now, come back here after. But then all the videos I have going forward, at least for a little while, because some of them are going to be Spider-Man related and other thing related, uh, you know, Ben Riley and other stuff, but more Spider-Man universe stuff. I would say try not to discuss this post credit scene in those videos either. Try to just keep it here for now until at least uh, middle of November when the movie starts coming out in other countries and stuff. And then after that, we can just go nuts because I'll assume or hope that everyone has seen it at that point. But I just don't want someone to watch like a random Venom discussion video about a comic book or a Spider-Man in the black suit costume uh, video and then get spoiled for this movie. So if you can, just keep your comments about the post credit scene to this video. So with all that said and that out of the way, let's dive into this scene because honestly, there's not a lot to sink our teeth into here. Uh, this is a very basic scene. It's just Eddie Brock still on the you know island or whatever. He's hanging out in like in a little motel or something on the water you know like did you see the beach in the background and he's hanging out laying on a bed and him and the symbiote are having a conversation as the news is on and the suit is basically revealing something that i've wanted to see since the first movie uh which is that it can transfer memories and it has a, a bunch of memories um you know about eight thousand years worth or whatever you know uh it says it talks about having a, a, a hive memory essentially which eddie pointed out to me eddie's mullet he's like hey do you that line in the movie where it said hive mind, um, you know, that was, it talks about how it has, you know, uh, 8,000 years of hive mind knowledge or whatever, and it's going to pass some of it to Eddie. I didn't hear the word hive. So I actually didn't know that's what it said. I thought it was saying something like, oh, if I transfer this all to you at once, it'll blow your mind. I remember him saying something along those lines, but I didn't remember the suit talking about a hive mind. So it looks like we have at least a reference to the hive mind, which could be a null thing, could be, you know, however they want to interpret it for the movie. Uh, we'll see, because I think in the end, they do give a special thanks to Donnie Cates and Ryan Stegman, along with Todd McFarlane, David Michelini, and then uh, even the people that like Andrew Wildman, people who worked on the Carnage Unleashed miniseries, like there was a, a bunch of um, thank yous in there. And it was clear once you read those thank yous of uh, going, OK, this is where they pulled from uh, comic wise. These are the miniseries that they kind of pulled from. And Carnage Unleashed is a very goofy comic book. So that makes sense that this movie kind of had some of the uh, inspirations from that in it. Uh, but this post credit scene, you know, Eddie's on the bed. The suit says, look, I can transfer a little fraction of this to you um, so you can kind of see the universe through my eyes. And I like that because remember in the first movie, I was hoping when the symbiote bonded to um, Laura Walters, character, the homeless lady who was, you know, being kept at the Life Foundation uh, facility, you had her, the suit like left her and went to Eddie. I was saying, wouldn't that have been awesome if Eddie had her memories and he actually saw what it was like to be homeless, to really be at rock bottom, because he was nearing rock bottom in the move, the first movie, but he wasn't at the bottom. But maybe he saw that this lady was homeless and she had nothing, but yet she was still positive. And that every time she saw Eddie, it cheered her up because he would, you know, give her a few dollars or whatever. And, and she would use that to get food and stuff. And like, I don't know, I just thought that would have added something kind of sweet to the story. Um, but uh, but they didn't go that route. So finally here at the end, you know, the suit says in the post credit scene, like, I can transfer, you know, some of this knowledge to you. And Eddie's like, okay, do it. And as that's happening, coincidentally, the spell that Doctor Strange casts or something, the multiverse gets ripped open, the sky turns bright white, and then it comes back and now Eddie's in the same room, but it's different. It's like nighttime or it's like a different time of day. The news on TV is is actually the Daily Bugle news with J. J. Jonah Jameson, so not what Eddie was watching when he was in on his earth. And then this guy comes in a room and goes, what's, you know, what's going on? And Eddie's like, uh, I don't know. And then Eddie turns into Venom and he's like, get out of here. I need time to think or something like that. So the guy leaves and then Venom looks over at the TV and J. Jonah Jameson is revealing that Peter Parker's uh, identity has been revealed and he's showing an image of Tom Holland, which looks like a new image, but it's clearly him on a green screen of some kind um, that they probably shot somewhere when they were filming, you know, the Spider-Man movie and sent it to them. And it's him on, you know, just standing in uh, Times Square looking around without his mask on and then uh, Venom, for some reason, says, hmm, this guy. And he licks the TV, signaling that he knows him, maybe. And I'm like, what? how does he know him? Uh, so maybe the symbiote 
has knowledge of not just one reality but multiple realities uh, maybe null because null in the comics could always see into the other realms i guess or um maybe it's something like that or i don't i don't think Null could really do that i can't remember it's hard to say what his powers were because they were kind of ambiguous at times um he was just all powerful it seemed but uh but yeah so i don't know so he licks the tv and then he looks at the camera and winks and you know farts <laughs> i don't know what happens uh but it was a scene that i was kind of like ah, oh, it's kind of lazy i would have liked physically tom holland and uh and tom hardy together in the same room but maybe they're obviously saving that for whatever movie this is you know that's going to happen in like whether it's going to be no way home which a lot of people are starting to theorize that venom will probably show up for a scene or two in no way home or if this will be the plot of the the next venom movie or if they'll before they do venom 3 if they do what i said before which is like do venom versus spider-man make that its own movie or do sinister six where you have venom there with you know uh with spider-man and, and everything and uh, maybe helping him fight the sinister six so i don't know where they're going to go with this i mean there's a, literally a million roads they could go and like tom hardy said in the interview he's like you know wherever we go um he's like the thing is we have a lot of roads to go so if if sony tells us we we can't do this right now we can go do this thing you know and if sony says we we can't do that thing there's another thing we could do you know so he's basically saying there was there's a reason why stephen graham's eyes light up there's a reason why morbius is part of the venom verse and that's what he called it officially in an interview he called it the venom verse so i love that um so this is all just, it's neat and I can't wait to see where it goes, but the scene itself, I just thought was a little kind of lazy in some regard, um, the way it was executed. But uh, but still, it's it's whatever. It's setting, the thing that it's doing is setting up a lot of stuff and a lot of potentials, and that is what's exciting about it. So I know there's a lot of people with their reviews of this movie said, oh man, it wasn't that good, but the post credit scene was amazing. I don't think the scene was amazing, but I think what it sets up is amazing, and uh, and I'm very excited to see where we go because i literally don't know <laughs> so as you've noticed over the past like year or so i've uh, i mean ever since the first season i've been integrating spider-man stories into this show uh, uh, particularly ben riley i did a lot of fun things where i was like eating his lego sets and stuff like that uh, you know but um you know i I've, I've been building towards what's coming next which is the next phase or the next season of this show if we get to you know do it fully um it will be very spider-man and spider-centric along with you know venom and symbiote stuff it'll be like a blend of the two and that seems appropriate to evolve into that because that's what the movies have done they've they've took their time as a solo character stuff and got their way to this point and now they have spider-man introduced uh, to to you know to merge the two worlds and that's perfect for me to have more content to go in in the in the future. So uh, so yeah, that's why over the last year or so I've been dabbling more into Spider-Man stories and getting more into Nick Spencer stuff because I was like, yeah, eventually this is gonna make sense. And here we are. So uh, so yeah, so let me know what you think. Uh, you know, of this scene uh, in general, like you know, if you like the scene. Like I said, scene doesn't blow me away, but the the potential from the scene, the uh, the the things that it sets up definitely excite me. Um, but I want to hear your thoughts. If you feel the same, if you feel different, whatever it is, let me know down below. And thank you all so much for being so respectful and so great to everyone else in other countries who hasn't seen this movie, at least here on this channel, like, you know, because I'm not on Twitter. I don't, you know, you guys do your own thing in your own lives, obviously. But uh, but seeing the community here be so positive and um, even if we feel differently about the movie, not spoiling it for people who haven't seen it in the comments like you guys have just been amazing and i honestly can't thank you enough i, I really do mean that it, it's so cool to to see that and uh, and now that we're past 2800 subscribers i mean you know the sky's the limit right we're gonna head for 3000 now and uh, and we gotta start coming up with ideas it might take us a while to get 3000 though because it took us a while to get to 2800 um but, you know, we got to start thinking of some ideas as we get closer to 3,000. We got to do something fun, that's for sure. Uh, so let me know if you have any thoughts on that, too, down in the comments below. Thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.